Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So in this one, we are taking a look at the best decks to make use of tonight's hot location, which is the Nexus. So Nexus is going to be adding your power at this location to the other location. So uh, this is kind of a fun one and uh, definitely encourages the use of the Guardians. I think they're going to see some play here. So let's take a look at the different decks to try out for this location across all the different pools. Starting out with pool number one here, pretty basic on reveal deck. We have Odin as our top end to rebuy our powerful on reveal effects. And we get to use some of the guardians here like Rocket, Star-Lord, and Gamora. Uh, because not only can we rebuy their effects, but we also know where it is likely our opponent is going to play their cards. So the chances that these actually hit is higher than it would normally be. Uh, then we have just some other good two drops here and things like Angela, Scarlet Witch if we're not confident about winning that lane. Uh, Sentinel, so we always have some early stuff to play. Uh, Wolfsbane, another good one for the location, uh, because we're going to be playing a lot of cards there. And Spider Woman, kind of a underrated card, in my opinion, uh, especially we have Odin here to get the effect going off again. And this is really good because they're likely to actually stack up their cards in the Nexus lane. So we're almost guaranteed to get pretty good Spider Woman value while still dodging Shang-Chi. Uh, but yeah, that's our pool one deck here. I think this should be pretty solid. Let's take a look at pool number two. Moving on to our pool two deck here with Devil Dinosaur. Nebula is also a great inclusion in both this and the pool one deck if you do have access to her via the season pass, but these are also fine decks without her. Just figured I'd mention it since a lot of players do see value in the past, but this is a pretty standard Devil Dino deck. We have a handful of cards here that are going to keep our hand nice and big. We have the Moon Girl Dino shenanigans, so we can get double dino sometimes, which is pretty nice. We're also using Storm, so we have the potential of locking off the Nexus if we're not really that big of a fan of it that game, which is always nice. Uh, some counter cards here and things like Cosmo and Shang-Chi and Chavez to make our deck a bit more consistent in the early game draws. Then up next, we have the deck that has been dominating ladder the past few days, and that is the Stature deck. So Stature been seeing a lot of success alongside cards like Black Bolt, Zabu, the Darkhawk package with him, Rock Slide, and Org. Uh, we're also seeing a little bit of movement stuff with Polaris, Jeff, and Miles going on in this deck. And the newly buffed Enchantress, still packing Shang-Chi, really like having both counters available in this deck. You have to be a little bit careful with the Enchantress. If you don't have Jeff, you can definitely also run uh, Nightcrawler in this spot. It's not as good, but it will get the job done. You really do need at least two things to move stuff around in order to kind of justify the Miles inclusion. But yeah, this deck has been really, really strong. I think it's one of the better decks out there right now. And if you have access to the cards, definitely one I would suggest playing because it conveniently dodges Shang-Chi aside from the Darkhawk. Uh, so it makes it easy to play into the hot location without having to worry about getting blown out by a Shang-Chi or something. Another great choice for this location is going to be Sarah, as not only does she have a way of getting rid of the location with Scarlet Witch, but we also have pretty effective ways at countering the opponents, trying to play big stuff into there with Shang-Chi and Enchantress. And we can actually make some pretty big stuff of our own with Hitmonkey, Mysterio, Bishop, and the combo with Killmonger and Nova. So Sarah's still a really good choice here. Again, if you don't have access to Jeff, you can consider a Lizard substitution as you can mitigate his downside pretty easily with Enchantress, but if you do have him, Jeff has a bit more flexibility, which I really do value quite a lot. Uh, you definitely don't always have to be greedy with your Hitmonkey in this deck. Sometimes it's okay just to play a Mysterio and Hitmonkey on turn 4. It's a 2-6, pretty good value. Uh, so I do think Sarah is definitely a good one. It is a little draw dependent on getting the counters you need when you need them. Uh, but is definitely a very solid deck and I think can leverage this location pretty effectively. Next here we have a Thanos Lockdown deck. So I've been having a lot of success with this one this month. 
been a lot of fun and i do think lockdown gets more powerful when players are intending on winning one lane rather than going wide because it effectively wins all three lanes with this location so for this one we do have the lockdown stuff with professor x and spider-man and daredevil to help set all that up we also have storm so we can get rid of a location we don't want which may sometimes be the hot location we have some big stuff that we can cheat out with the time stone like blue marvel devil dino and gamora it's also a little bit easier to guess where they're playing which is nice a nebula if they're incentivized to play towards the nexus we can get rid of it and have nebula kind of popping off in another lane angela just because we have a lot of stuff to play so she usually gets pretty good stats armor to protect our big stuff or protect our one drops and jeff just as flexibility if we need to get into the storm lane or just to play with our angela and then move elsewhere for an additional power boost and then the last deck we have here, we're going to be revisiting Devil Dino, but with a little bit different direction. Uh, this is actually kind of close to an old school Devil Dino build that I played when She-Hulk first came out. And I really like this list with the newly buffed Collector. Collector's actually been pretty decent. Uh, he is often 2-4 or better, which is really good stats for the cost. So we are running Storm, uh, definitely a lane disruption kind of deck where we're trying to close down one lane and then go big in another one. For that reason, we do have Doom as well. Uh, and Moon Girl. Moon Girl has been a big MVP, really good with Quinjet. Quinjet still definitely very powerful card, even after it was changed a little while ago. Uh, but making two She-Hulks or making a second Doctor Doom that you can play one of on five because of your Quinjet, really, really powerful. Making two Dinos, obviously a good thing to do as well. Uh, this deck just does a lot of powerful things. It has a lot of different lines to it, and I've been really impressed with the buffed collector in it, especially when we're able to park him in a storm lane, uh, much like Nebula kind of just gets out of hand really quick. Mr. Fantastic helps us go wide. We have Sentinel for hand refill, armor for some protection, and then Coulson for a bit more hand refill and the nice synergy we have with Quinjet where sometimes we get a mana cheat, powerful generated cards into play. So I really like this deck and I think it's going to be a very solid choice for the location. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.